Blessings, the channel that brings dreams, visions, and near-death experiences visually to you. I hope that you are all having a very blessed week. Before we get started in today's video, if you have had an urgent rapture dream, vision, tribulation dream, or even a near-death experience, and would like to share it with the channel and have it made into a video just like this, please submit your video to cloud9blessings at gmail.com. In today's video, we are going to be looking at a submission that was emailed in by our dear sister in Christ, Nadia, where she wanted to share with us her six rapture dreams. I am so excited to see what she has experienced. So let's now take a look and see what she saw in her dreams. Okay, before I get started, I wanted to pull out Old Bible, the Holy Bible. <laughs> I'm reading um, Matthew 24, 44. And it says, Therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. So, that's true. We don't know when Jesus is coming. He just come in with just a surprise. So, the first thing I want to talk about is my first dream. My first dream is where... Um, I am with my, my mother and my sisters, you know, my sisters and my, my little brother, and we're dropping my sister JD off at our university, Albany State University. And we drop her off and we go to McDonald's near the Albany Mall. And the funny thing about it is I'm literally walking through the drive through like, you know, the car drives through the drive through to go get your food. I'm walking through the drive through <laughs> and I placed order. I'm like, I should know something was off then. I'm like, why am I walking when the car is... You know usable so um i'm walking i got the food and my sister andy comes up to me and you know she's acting a little bit like a little younger sister who want to get her way and she's kind of annoying me i'm like just you know bro like just leave me alone right now and i remember holding the plastic cup like the paper cup and the plastic bag you know the paper bag in my hand and i can literally remember feeling the um the materials and i'm near the mcdonald's you know like next to the albany mall and dollar tree and the weird thing about it the dollar tree is completely gone the um Albany Mall um, parking lot is empty and the McDonald's empty. I should know something was up then, something was wrong. And then next thing I know, my sister that we literally just dropped off in my dream, she's literally in the scene with us and near us in next to the car and she's screaming, Jesus. She screams so loud. I have never heard her vocally scream like that before. And next thing I know, I look up in the sky, it's Jesus and the angels. And they were all on horses. Jesus was in the front with the angels. And the Lord had it to where I was like able to zoom in to see. And it was so pretty. And my heart was like, oh my gosh, this is Jesus. And then within that dream, I was transported to my family's home. My my, my big family home. And where everybody, like, you know, everybody comes together at the big family home. And we're at the door. Where the door is wide open, we're able to see through the door. And I'm looking up in the sky and angels are zooming. Like, just zooming, getting people. And the thing that kind of gets us is that... We were scared. We didn't know that we were going to make it or not. We thought that we were going to be left behind. I didn't know too much about the rapture. I always posted about God and Jesus on my social medias. But the thing that got me, I'm like, I knew of the rapture, but I wasn't too much into the rapture. I just knew about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And then I'm like, this is, I'm about to be left behind because I wasn't prepared like, you know, like, like I needed to. And then um, I just remember my, my sister, Jadia, on my own. Um, on my own left side, my sister Lydia on my right, and my brother behind me, my other sister behind me, and my mom is like have all of us huddle up together, like you know, like a little mom trying to get all her like her little bitties together, and my mom is crying, saying, "Lord, don't take without my kids, take me and my kids, like you know, don't leave me behind." And the next thing I know, I see an angel zoom in above our door frame coming into our house, and behind him was a smoke, like a little, little gray of smoke behind him, like a little mist. And he left behind like a little Clorox container and it was like moving up and down. And it says prepping the kids or preparing the kids. And I remember this angel was so pretty. He had golden hair, a little, um, like a white male. And um, he had golden hair, the color gold I have not seen on this earth. It was so bright. It's like it was a sun bright gold color. And I remember um, I was crying, I was frustrated. And while all this is going on, it's a song playing. And you know, on TikTok or social media, on Facebook, sometimes they have snippet of songs. And this song was a snippet and it played in my dream. And I know it's from the Lord. I heard the whole song through because I never heard the whole song. All like, you know, you go to YouTube, listen to the whole song. I've never heard this whole song until inside my dream. And every word played and I was just crying like emotional, like what's going on, what's going on? And then out of nowhere, I felt like something wet touched my neck because the Clorox container is like, you know, Clorox container. And it put something in front of us, I guess, to 
you know, for us to realize like a familiar object. We know what Clorox wipes are to clean. And it's like it was preparing to clean our bodies, but I remember something wet touched my neck and I woke up out of my dream, freaking out, like, what happened? What happened? What happened? So after that happened, I'm like, okay, I just had my first dream and I don't know what to do too much. So the next dream, I am, my mother is dropping my sister and I off at a university that I have never been to. I don't, I've never seen this in nowhere ever. And we're wearing the school colors. And as we get out the car, um, she dropped us off at the front part of the university. And our cousins on my dad's side, um, you know, they showed up and there's some cousins like, you know, they act a little funny toward us. Um, and I don't know their names or not like that, but they just say, you know, they don't really don't speak to us too much. And in my dream, the Lord put in my heart, forgive. I have told you to forgive. And I told her, I said, you know what? I forgive you. And I'm like, we're sorry too. You know, we're sorry. And I'm like, you know, I forgive you. I forgive you. And they get in my car, my mom. And I'm like, mom, are you okay to be with them? She's like, I'm fine. Y'all go in. Y'all go in. So we go into the um, university. And it kind of reminds like the first day of school, my sister, like, she had her backpack on. I'm like, and inside, like, an elementary school. I didn't know why they, why they look like that. I'm not sure if it was, like, a, you know, something the Lord trying to tell my elementary or, like, childhood. So I, she go her way. I go my way. We say, love you. Bye. See you later. And um, I go into my classroom. And the classroom kind of reminds me of my middle school um, math teacher's room. And the way it was set up, I didn't think so much of it. And the students in there, I have never seen before, but I knew them in my dream, if that makes sense. And I don't know where, as we're getting ready to do our work, um, I see some students run toward an open window, a big open window, and they're screaming and hollering. And I can't move in my seat. I'm stuck. And I look around the room, and I see other students. And they're, they're like a few other students, like few, and their seat's stuck too. And I'm like, I want to call my sister JD to tell, hey, something's wrong. Um, the world is like, it's going crazy. Everybody's going crazy. And then I don't know where my head hits the table. I black out. And I can't see anything, but I can still hear. And I remember um, one of my classmates say, maybe these are the students that the Lord was going to take with him in the rapture. I said, okay, okay. That that freaked me out. So after that, I literally started looking at rapture dreams. And I went, I found Crystal. I found your page, Crystal. And I started looking at all your videos. And it was really cool. And yeah, that's, last night, that's my second dream. My third dream was when um I was in my room. As I'm in my room. No, the, the, the funny thing about the Lord, he is so good. He, your, your, your surroundings in my dream, I, the same way I went to sleep is the same way I woke, I woke up in my rapture dream. I had my phone beside me, my body pillow, everything was in place, my room, not one thing out of place, even my, my clothes piled up on, over there on the other side of my room. Everything was in place. And as I'm getting out of bed, I even put my bedroom shoes in, put my bedroom shoes on. I'm just sliding them in, getting out, you know, thinking nothing of it. And something my spirit said, nah, didn't look out the window. I look out my window in my room, I open my blind, I look out my window, and this gray and black swirly vortex is outside in the sky, spinning. And I'm like, what the world is that? And in my heart and in my spirit, I literally hear, like, not in my ear, but like in my spirit, I hear, I'm here. I'm here. I'm like, what am I going? I'm like, and I started screaming because the Lord just literally told me, Nadia, I'm here. And I hit the corner of my room, <laughs> trying to um, get out of the room so I can meet the Lord. And out of nowhere, I am literally um, transported again to my big family home. And we're in the hallway, and I remember screaming for my mom, Jesus is here, Jesus is here. She's like, what? What's going on? I said, Jesus is here. And she's like, what? And she's trying to make her way toward me. And, you know, the entrance of a hallway, you go in the hallway, and you leave out the hallway. Um, you know, trying to get inside, leave out. And the hallway floor become a, fly, a fire floor, and nobody can touch. I'm like, she couldn't even touch me. And I was freaking out. And I looked back to my right side. My sister, J.D. Pops. I said, how did you get here? She said, I have no idea, Nadia. And I looked back at the wall, like looking at the hallway, looking at my mom. And I turned back to look at J.D. And my brother's here. I said, how did you get here? He said, I don't know. And we're all just kind of confused. And next thing I know, as we're all standing on the floor, um, these golden rings are underneath us. Three golden rings under our feet. And I'm like, what's going on? And then next thing I know, something is spinning me around in a circle, like cleaning up prepping my body I was really like wow what's going on and it's like the only thing I know I'm looking at my siblings and they're standing like at at stand like they're looking straight ahead like with straight face I'm like maybe the angel was doing the same thing to them but I couldn't see it I don't know the only thing I know is I was pretty excited <laughs> and then um the next thing I know is that the golden ring gets brighter like a golden yellow ring I mean this gets brighter and brighter and we are being lifted up to the sky, like to the um, ceiling. As we're being lifted up to the ceiling, my brother like, Nadia, we're going home, we're going home. I'm like, yeah, I'm so happy. My sister Jay, like, you know, like tear, like, you know, you can see like real tears. Like we're, we're about to leave this horrible world behind and go with the Lord. 
And as we're about to hit the ceiling, our head about to hit the ceiling, um, we get placed back down. And nothing in our mind was like, oh, we got left behind or we didn't make it. It was just like an exciting moment. Like, hey, you know, we experienced it. So I run to my mom and I tell her, I said, hey, mama, you know, the Lord let us be like lifted up so we can, you know, like, you know, experience the rapture and everything. And she was like, oh, that's good. And we were trying to tell our dad, but he was mad. He had an attitude. <laughs> he had an attitude. He wanted to listen. But, you know, it is what it is at that point. And um, that was my dream, my um, my third dream. Um, my fourth dream is when um, I was at the, um, I was at my big family house again. It's a lot of dreams. I'm trying to get everything straight. I was at my big family house again, and we were having an event. And as we was at the event, I remember I heard the horns again, these loud trumpet horns. And I automatically grabbed my cell phone. As I'm looking at my cell phone, I told myself, I want to remember the day, the time, the second that Jesus came. I, I've been doing that for a while. I'm like, I, want to, I want to remember this time. And I got my phone. My phone is my phone. I have the same that um, background cover, the same that phone model. It was the same phone case. Everything was mine. And I run outside down the steps and I look up in the sky. I'm like, I look in the sky. I'm like, where is Jesus? I'm like, I don't see him. And the dream blacks out. So I'm like, great. The dream blacks out. And then my fifth dream, I was in the room with my mom, my sister. And we're in the room just chilling, relaxing, you know, having a good time. You know, like, you know, just spend time with your mom, your sisters. And then out of nowhere, we hear the horns again. And for the first time, like, it's like the first time happening because, like, I wasn't aware that I had miniature rapture dream, other rapture dreams. So we heard the horn. We run in, in the corner <laughs> trying to get out of the room, trying to get outside. And I'm automatically transported again to my big family house. I think something behind that, you know. So we walking down the stairs, my sister and I, and we're looking up at the sky. We see Jesus this time. And I'm like, yes, Jesus, yes. And we're like, Lord, you're here. You're here. We're praising the Lord. We're so happy. And the Lord snapped his fingers and the, a little cloud came down to meet us at our feet. And within a millimeter of a second, the tiniest second, it goes away. We did something. And we're like, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us. Like, I forgot what we did. I'm not sure if it was over procrastinating or, you know, whatever it was doing. And I remember, I'm like, Jesus, please take us. We're like, please take us, Lord Jesus. And then the Lord had us so we can like zoom in again so we can see the Lord really clear. And he was talking to this older white man, like a white beard, white hair. He was talking to him. And then it's like he turned, like he was leaving. And I just remember pleading and crying. And I woke up in my dream. And I'm like, I got a lot to do probably. The Lord's trying to tell me something. I'm not sure what's going on. I was just freaking out. Then my last dream, which is my sixth dream, I remember um, I was outside like in the field, but it's like it was a yard. I'm not sure how to describe it. It was kind of confusing. I was outside with my sister Jadia and I don't know where people are running and screaming and hollering and they're looking up in the sky and the sky, it's a lion in the clouds walking in the clouds and people are frightened and I'm like, y'all don't know who that is. Just the lion of Judah. I'm like, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. And we hit the floor. We hit the ground. We hit, yeah, we hit the floor. We hit the ground um, without even thinking. We did not even say a word. We just bowed down. We hit the floor. We hit the ground. And there was some other people around us that um, hit the ground too. There was no question about it. Other people were like about to freaking stampede over us because they were trying to get out of the way because they were scared. But we knew in our heart, we knew in our hearts that that was Jesus. And like, that was amazing. And then um, soon the Lord had it to where we were transporting this room, like this waiting room. And we all had like little beepers. It was like in the 90s and 80s, they had these little beepers and everything. And people, beavers start turning green. And I'm like, Jesus, what about me? <laughs> what about me? And then my beeper turned green. And then the Lord was, t um, there was some angels, like some big angels in charge telling us, like, hey, y'all, we're giving y'all a chance to prep. Like, you know, I like, get y'all family members and friends ready. You know, what's about to happen? Y'all not going to be here. And we know in re like reality and real life that the Lord, he's going to come quick. And we're not going to have time to prepare our family and friends and other people around us when he does come. So I guess like this was like a, a dream for preparation. I'm not sure. Dream preparation. Okay, um, and then um, the next thing I know, um, my sister and I go back home, and we're talking to my mom, my little brother, and they're crying, and my other sisters, they're crying too, and I'm like, y'all, I'm going to tell you as much as I can, which I, I've already told y'all about Revelation, but I'm trying to tell you about the Antichrist, the Mark of the Beast, the, um, the creatures, the, um, the famine, the, the, um, the sun scorching, like all this stuff, like people are literally trying to survive till Jesus come back again. Um, and I was trying to tell them and they were just crying. And next time my mom tells me, Nadia, you're going to have to tell your dad 
that this is y'all about to leave us. So next thing I know, I'm transported to get in my dream and we're going, my dad and I are, you know, in the car talking to drive, he's driving somewhere. I say, dad, I'm not gonna be here no more. I just wanted to tell you, I told mom and them, and I told him the same thing. I think he didn't understand what I was telling him, even though I was telling him that I'm about to be raptured up. And then I get back to the house again. And within a second, the angel came and got JD. And JD was, my sister JD, she was ready to go. She just left. But then my brother came up to me, my little brother, and he was hu hugging my, like, my waist and crying. And I remember telling him, like, Mike, you know, I love you and everything's going to be okay. I'm going to try to be with you as much as I can, you know, like, watching over you in heaven. Um, but I say, you know, I can only do so much. And in my mind, I had to realize when I woke up that it was nothing. He's in God's hands now. I can't do anything. Um, it's not It's not in my control. It's never, it never was in my control, and it's not in my control now. So he's in the Lord's hands. And then within the dream also, I remember my cousin <laughs> texting me on Messenger and asked me, Nada, are you still here? And I'm like, hmm, am I still here? So they knew that this was going on, the world was going crazy, like a preparation. Like people knew that, hey, family members were leaving, their family members were leaving for them, and they prepared them. And I'm like, yeah, I'm about to go. And, you know, I, you know hopefully I'll pray. i see y'all later in heaven. But, um, yeah, those are my dreams. And it was really, really interesting. I'm not trying to hold y'all alone at all. I want to read one more thing. And it's from um, 1 Corinthians. Where are you at? There you go. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. And it talks about the people. Um, a lot of times we like to think like, hey, everybody's going to make it because you're a good person. That's not true. Um, the Lord does have rules that we have to follow. And these people, these certain people will not inherit the kingdom of God. Again, this is 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. And it says, Know ye not that the right that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators nor idolaters, neither uh, neither fornicators, nor um, idolaters, or adulterers, nor affectionates, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, neither thieves, nor covenants, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. That is something to literally pray and meditate about because a lot of us are not prepared and ready for that. We have to do like a, a check within our hearts and see, hey, am I one of these people that will be left behind because of my way I, the way I carry myself? And then the last thing I want to leave y'all with is Revelation 22, 19, um, 20 through 21. And this kind of makes me cry. I have read Revelation five times and each time I read it, something always new revealed to me. But this this is the last this is the last part of the Bible, the last whew. Okay, twenty says He which testeth testifies these things saith, Surely I come quickly, Amen. Even so come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Sister Nadia for sharing these powerful rapture dreams you experience, all six of them. Many things stood out to me with all of them, but one specific was seeing the Lord as a lion and him being in the sky. How beautiful is that? And being able to feel yourself being transformed. I look forward to the day when we can all meet the Lord in the air. And it is so very exciting, brothers and sisters. Many are having dreams in these end times, and it has been prophesied in Acts 2.17 that many would have dreams and prophesy. And it is so exciting to know that we are that blessed generation that will see the Lord return in the air. Thank you so much again, Sister Nadia. Her channel information is in the description box, so please subscribe to her channel in case she creates more videos sharing more dreams that she has. May God bless you all, family. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video today. I truly hope that it blesses each and every one of you. May God bless you all.